all right let's talk about this because if you are a developer using unreal engine and maybe you're just getting into things and you're not aware of what i'm about to explain to you i'm willing to bet that your character blueprint variable tab looks a little something like this we have a bool for uh maybe stunned and another bool for uh, things like iframes for being invincible and then we have another bool for is attacking and we have a bool for maybe uh being burned if you have like a burn status and then we also have like a poison status and we have a um is healing status something like that and before you know it we actually have a lot of bool variables and that's just very messy and very annoying to have to deal with so then you might think oh but i can just make like a status effects bool array instead and i'll just remember all of the indexes and which status effects they correspond to they don't need to have any names and that's a little clunky as well because now you're also updating a separate document somewhere maybe in your google drive or whatever to be able to even remember what these things mean at which point you might say oh okay but i've heard about this i've got an id i make a string array instead and we'll turn that into a map that goes with a boolean variable and now what we can do is we can put a name and a boolean there and this is actually the closest to being a decent id but still that's not what we're going to be talking about today these are all decent solutions they all work but unreal has a gameplay tag system built in and you should be using it so instead of all this what we're going to do is we're going to add one single variable and that will be our tags we'll just call it uh game play tags and that will be a type gameplay tag container this is as it sounds a container for gameplay tags so what we can do here is we can add it what gameplay tags we have and by default there's no tags here but this is where we get into this because Things like being stunned and having iframes or maybe having a, a bull for whether or not a character is at that moment doing an attack. The burned, poison, healing, all those kinds of things. You're going to need to put that on a whole bunch of different classes. Your enemies are probably going to need very similar things. You might want to also like have a certain destructible object that you can set on fire or something like that point being is that those bulls are going to be reused in a lot of different places in your game and there's really no sense in making all those classes all have these bull variables and then when you want to change it anywhere you need to go through like 50 different blueprints and change them everywhere and it's just bothersome so what we do instead is what we can do is we can add a new gameplay tag and we'll just name this one uh status dot stunned and we can set that to be in a source we have the default gameplay tags dot ini in general that's where you're going to store all your gameplay tags to begin with and we can even add a comment to it so um character is stunned and then when we add that tag you will see it has a hierarchy to its tags because we called it status dot so status will be the parent tag and then dot is a child tag stunned so now we can check and I'll show you how in a moment, we can check if it has any status applied to a actor at all, or we can specifically check for a status like being stunned. So let's add another one, uh, that will be status dot burn, for instance, and we'll say it's burning. We'll add that new tag, and now we'll be able to see under the status we have either burn or stunned that we can enable. Uh, you can also simply uh, click this plus sign over here to add a sub tag, which will just add the status dot for you. And we can say we also want to add poison, depletes health. And we'll add that new tag. And just like that, we now have all of these tags with a parent tag. So again, we can check specifically for uh, anybody being poisoned or burned or stunned, or just check whether or not any of these are enabled because the moment we enable any of the child tags, the parent tag automatically gets enabled as well. And we can check that with the has tag function here. So we've got the actor has tag. I generally don't actually 
use this, I generally use this uh, through the bottom one here for gameplay tags. And there we can put in our tag container and we can check for any specific tag. So let's check for the stunned tag. And here we can say whether or not we need an exact match. So if we want a exact match, it will only return true when it is status.stunned. But if we say, ah, oh, we don't actually need an exact match, uh, we just need to know whether or not it has any of these status.stunned. So what you can do is, of course, you can also say uh, status.stunned uh, for like, from a hammer attack. Or we can say status.stunned from being stupid. I don't know. <laughs> And at this point, if we just want to check status.stunned, and it doesn't matter what we do, we don't want the exact match. We just want to know, is it stunned at all? If any of these child tags are enabled, uh, that's fine. That does mean that we're just stunned. If we do want to check for an exact match, what it will do is it will check, is it just status.stunned? No child tags applied, just status.stunned. So, in general, you probably don't actually want to have this enabled because that is the entire power of having this gameplay tag system is that you can check for a parent tag and all the child tags will also count. So, just for the uh, purpose of this example, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just check on every frame whether status.stunned is enabled and we're not going to be looking for an exact match because I don't really care about any of that. And then we're going to be printing the result of that. And let's just make a quick uh, debug key F, which will go into a flip-flop, and that will then turn on and turn off that gameplay tag. So the way we do that is with the gameplay tag reference as well. And there we can just simply add a gameplay tag. And here we can say uh, we want to add status.stunned. And you might be surprised, probably not, but we can also remove gameplay tags in much the same way. So we're going to remove status.stunned on the B. If you're not familiar with the flip-flop, what it does is first time you go through, it goes through there. And then when you go through it again, it does this one. And then when you go through it again, it does the first one again and over and over and over again. So we can see it's now printing out false. When I press F, it starts printing out true because I now have that gameplay tag. And then when I press F again, it starts printing out false again because I don't have that gameplay tag anymore. Now, the wonderful thing is if I make any other actor in my game, so let's just say uh, we make a uh, test actor here. And in this test actor, I add another gameplay tags container. These gameplay tags are stored in the default gameplay tag.ini, which is just an engine file, right? So they are available throughout the entire project, which is absolutely fantastic. You can also make separate INI files for separate reasons. If you want to separate the different gameplay tags from different files, you can do that. I honestly have never bothered with that because it doesn't seem all that relevant, but especially if you're using a lot of gameplay tags, maybe that can be nice to be able to separate them out. Anyway, so now you can make these gameplay tags, which are effectively just balls anyway, just with a little bit more intelligence behind them, and they are available throughout your entire project, so you don't have to remake those bool values on every single object that you might want to use them on. And to easily get the gameplay tag containers on other actors, uh, what you can easily do is you can make a blueprint interface here, and we'll call that um, BPI get tags, something like that. Just in this new function, we're going to add in a output that will be our tag container, which will be of type gameplay tag container. And if you're familiar with how Blueprint interfaces work, this should all uh, be self-explanatory. If you're not, I've got a specific video explaining how Blueprint interfaces work and why they're useful. But now we've made a get gameplay tag container function on this interface. And if we have a test actor here with our uh, gameplay tags, which is a gameplay tag container, uh, in the class settings, we can go into the interfaces and um, we implement the get tags interface that we've made. And when we double click that, we can get our return node here and we simply return the gameplay tags on this. And this is now callable from any other blueprints, meaning that our character, for instance, can just 
try to run this function on any object it tries to interact with. If it does have this interface, it will uh, get back the gameplay tag container. Again, if you want to know more about Blueprint interfaces and how to use them, it works really well together with something like this. Go check out my video specifically on Blueprint interfaces. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,